guys, it's Jody. Today's video, I want to talk about a new pouring medium that I've been testing behind the scenes and I'm ready to showcase it. But before I get into that, I, I just wanted to kind of put a disclaimer out there that if you're new to my channel, welcome. <laughs> I love to experiment. I am super curious and I, 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 I guess I could say I'm never happy with just one. <laughs> thing. I always have to say, well, what, 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 what would happen if I did this? Or what, what would happen if I did that? So the, uh, experimentation, it scratches, uh, my curiosity, it, it scratches that itch, but also I think it also might help you as the viewer, give you some options. You know, um, the pouring mediums that I've tried, they all work, they all work really well, but they're at different price points. Uh, some of them are at different stores that you may not be able to get to. You may be able to get to Home Depot or not Lowe's or Lowe's and not Home Depot. Uh, also, and I, and I like to state the, you know, for those that can't get any of the products that I showcase on here, it, what you're really looking for with the Blooms Technique, uh, the pouring medium base, is you want an untinted uh, paint base, one that's uh, they would tint at the store for you a really dark color or a black color. So it's more translucent, like a traditional pouring medium where when it dries, you're going to see the color and you know, that's, that's the whole idea, except the, the paint, the house paint bases are a little bit thicker than your traditional pouring medium base. So keep that in mind. If you aren't able to get any of the, the, uh, paint bases that I have tested on this channel and you're looking for something to be able to use. Now, having said that, this uh, paint base that I've been testing, and you all know I love the Infinity. I've been using it to no end and I I have quite, I have I've kind of a small stockpile of it uh, only because Murphy's Law always happens to me. Whenever I love something, they eventually discontinue it. So I I usually stock up on stuff. And there have been rumors that the uh, Infinity, which you get at Lowe's, may or may not be discontinued. I've I've heard uh, some of my subscribers have, have mentioned to me that, that their people at Lowe's have said, hey, this is being discontinued. I haven't heard that from uh, the people at my Lowe's. And I even recently saw a commercial for the Infinity <laughs> uh, paint on, on television. So... I don't have the answer whether it's going to be continued or not, but I, I always like to have backups. Always, always, always like to have backups. And this, this one, you may be using it already. It's newer to me, but let me show you. It is, and I have two different ones. It's the same brand. That's the uh, Valspar Ultra uh, in high gloss. Ultra Valspar Ultra high gloss, the base C. I've been testing this. And uh, when I was at Lowe's, they also had a Valspar Ultra semi-gloss in the base C. And I wanted to, I wanted to test both of them because I wanted to see what the difference really was. Is there a huge difference? Obviously, one's high gloss, one's semi-gloss, you know, so it's going to dry a bit glossier. But sometimes even high gloss I've seen doesn't dry super glossy, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I've been testing these behind the scenes and I've been getting really good results with a certain varnish. I've tested it with uh, Josonia. I did not like it with the Josonia. And I have some dried dried test pieces that I want to show you here in a minute. And I'll show you why I didn't like it with the Josonia. And that's not to say it won't work for you. Um, I found a varnish that works well with it. I almost gave up on it because it kept giving me, it kept moving and giving me swiggly lines similar to what the bear uh, would do to me when I tried testing it alone. I tried the Josonia with it. I also tried the Minwax One Coat. And these are all thicker varnishes. This this paint base is on the thinner side. So you, you want to use kind of a thicker varnish. Uh, I tried the Minwax One Coat. And I don't know if it was uh, a chemical reaction with the paint base and the Minwax. It did not mix up well. And I've used that Minwax with other paint bases. So I know it's not the Minwax. It, I think it... it it did some weird stuff. It, it didn't even look right. So I didn't even try it. I just scrapped it. <laughs> but the varnish I ended up going with, and I, I it's, to me, it's the dream combination. I went with the Verithane Triple Thick 
poly polyurethane, the clear, the clear gloss. This is water-based. This, <laughs> and of course, <laughs> this comes from Home Depot and the Valspar comes from Lowe's. You know, go figure. Valspar, I don't have the exact amount because I only bought them in the quartz. But when I looked online, and online only shows you their ultra white, they don't show their other paint bases, which are usually a bit more, you know, a few dollars more. I'm going to place it at between $35 and $40 for the gallon. If, if anybody, if any of you know, I, and, and I'll check. When I go back to Lowe's, I haven't been to Lowe's in probably about a month, but when next time I go, I will note the the price of the gallon but it's definitely cheaper than the infinity so with that today's video i am going to first i'm going to show you some of the some of my tests my dried pieces i also want to show you the difference how the uh the high gloss and the semi gloss dried i i like to put a little bit of a dollop of each base you know on a on a, uh, a piece of freezer paper and let it dry and see does it you know, dry alone with no color, anything in it? And I'll show you that as well. And then we're gonna do a couple of pieces with the high gloss today. This is gonna be kind of a, a, a series. I don't know, maybe three or four videos. I wanna, I wanna run it through the gauntlet to show you, you know, using Australian Floetrol, US Floetrol, the high gloss, the semi gloss, all with the, the Varathane. Um, and then I'll do a mixing video at the end if anybody wants it. It's, it's very similar to how I mix up the Infinity. If any of you have this already or want to try it while I'm still doing all of these videos, I mix it uh, the same I would mix the Infinity Joe Sonia. I mixed the Valspar Ultra Varathane at three to one. So three parts of the Valspar to one part of the Varathane Triple Thick. That's it. <laughs> But I'll do, I will do a mixing video, uh, you know, probably towards the end of this series. So with that, I am going to bring you down and I think what, what I'm first going to do is show you the consistency of both of these and how they dry alone. And then I'll show you the dried results and just kind of what I saw in some of my tests. And then we're going to paint. All right. Well, first things first here, I've got, this is the Valspar Ultra in the high gloss, and this is the semi-gloss. And just on first appearance, they look exactly the same. This is the high gloss, and it is, these are both very thin, which is why I, I didn't test it with the Minwax Polycrylic, because it would just make for a very thin pouring medium, and you'd have to thicken it up pretty much every paint. That's not to say it won't work. Totally give it a go if you want to, but I didn't, I just didn't go that way. But this, this is the consistency of the high gloss alone. And then this is the semi gloss. And it actually almost looks a hair thicker, but when they mix up with the Varathane, it's a pretty nice consistency and it runs really nicely off the stick. So those are those two and get it close up. I mean, you, at that point, this you can see in the can, it's just a little bit clearer on the side. Whereas this one, um, it does have some titanium white in it, but don't let that scare you because when I show you the dried results, I have a hard time telling the difference between the uh, semi-gloss and the high gloss. That's how nicely they dry. These are the two caps too, just to give you an idea. And I have one more thing to show you here. If you can see, oops, let me turn this around. This is what I put uh, a dollop of each base all alone. This is the Valspar High Gloss. Let's see if the light's going to catch that. It dries a lot clearer because this below here is the, the Semi Gloss. And these are both the Base C. This has a little bit more titanium in it. This dries a bit clearer. But don't let that scare you. Trust me. <laughs> so I wanted you to, to see that as well. Now I want to show you some of the 
dried pieces that I did the tests. These are the what I mixed up. These are all the Valspar Ultra Semi Gloss with the Joe Sonia. And I do I have I don't have the uh, the Valspar High Gloss with the Joe Sonia. I don't have them here with me, but it did the same thing <laughs> where I got wiggles and all that good stuff. But this this one here was the the Valspar Semi Gloss with Australian Floetrol, and it was Joe Sonia at three to one. And it dries nicely. I mean, it, for a semi gloss, it. And I'll show you the other ones too. But do you see how it just kind of moves around in there? That um, that right there, not acceptable to me. And the, and I and it wasn't leaving. I wasn't leaving. Uh, <laughs> I was taking enough paint off because you know I'm guilty of that. But for these tests, I was totally taking enough paint off. And then these two were. Again, the semi gloss, but they were with uh, US Floetrol. And I just had some some issues in here. And I again these were all with the Joe Sonia. I wasn't wasn't really happy with uh the way it was working for me. But again, that's not to say you know it won't work for you. If that's what you have and you want to try it, hey, go for it. Totally go for it. But again, if you kind of can notice the the sheen on here. The, this is the semi-gloss. This isn't even the high gloss yet. Now, here's a comparison I have for you. This is actually the high gloss with the Verithane. Let me see if I can... And let me see if I can get a better angle on here. High gloss semi-gloss. The colors, they just dry. To me, the colors dry the same. It's really just the glossiness. And if you're going to resin or varnish your pieces, that's a non-issue. But it's, it's just so similar. <laughs> so similar. <clears throat> These two are the Valspar with the Verithane. And just, it, there's no movement. The, the, uh, what I was looking for with the cells popping up, the, the way it dried, it dried, you know, no shifting, no anything like that. But if you can see, I, I didn't write it down. So <laughs> I don't know which one is which, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. One of them is high gloss and one of them is semi gloss. But my point is they both are, work equally well. So if for some reason your Lowe's only has the semi-gloss and not the high gloss, get it. It'll work just as well. I want to say this is the high gloss only because it's just minutely glossier than this one, but still. <laughs> and then here is with that was with Australian Floetrol. This is with U.S. Floetrol. So it does work with the U.S. Floetrol mix as well. It does take some finagling. Uh, and again, this one of these is the semi-gloss and one of these is the high gloss. Actually, this one is the high gloss. This one I can tell just has a little bit more of a gloss. This one is a little touch, a hair muted, but the colors are still absolutely gorgeous. And they just dry beautifully. And these are with the Verithane. This is the high gloss. This is the semi gloss. You can't, I mean, you just can't really tell. But just the way the the cells stay put with the Verithane varnish. Uh, which is why I, I'm going to continue to use this paint base with the Verithane. But, you know, I'll, I'll keep stressing. If you don't have the Verithane or you don't want to use it and you want to try something else, totally go for it. Finally, these were uh, using the white. I had a little issue here, but don't let that deter you. It can be finicky. I had to, I had to really push for these, but again, you know, no shifting. 
this was the semi gloss and then this was the high gloss it's just a touch glossier so those were all my tests you just kind of behind the scenes well not all of them believe me there were more but i <laughs> i don't want to bore you for 30 minutes with just showing you my dried results when we can paint and then i will show you those dried results and how everything works so now we're going to go and paint with the high gloss and the Verithane mixture. We're going to do a bloom and a swipe today. And then in forthcoming videos, we will do uh, the same with a U.S. Floetrol. And then we'll do the semi-gloss with the Australian Floetrol and the U.S. Floetrol. And then we'll do a mixing video. So look for those in future videos. But today we're going to do the high gloss. So let's go get started. For the first of our two tests today, I am going to be using a six inch deep sided canvas. I'm, I'm graduating up from my little four inch tiles and my four by six uh, panels. I've tested with those enough. I want to see this pouring medium on something a little bit bigger. So I've got some pillow paint on my spinner and I'm just going to affix this to it. I've got tape underneath it and it'll, as the as the paint spreads down it'll thicken or it'll stick even more so the pillow paint i'm going to use is my glidden premium in satin but i wanted to show you the pouring medium by itself just mixed up this is again this is the uh high gloss we're going to be testing out today the valspar high gloss uh the ultra in the base c mixed with the again the polyurethane triple thick water-based uh, clear gloss at three to one so three parts of the Valspar to one part of the Verithane and this is what the pouring medium thickness looks like it's a really it's a nice thickness all right now I'm going to add again this is the Glidden Premium in the satin and we're going to do a bloom for this first one here now the colors I have mixed up, and you'll probably uh, recognize them because they're my favorite colors to test with, but I did a tube paint, a fluid, and a pigment just to uh, see how this pouring medium works with all three of them. So this first one is, oops, be nice if I told you what it was. <laughs> It's the Atelier Interactive, the red gold, and this is a really thick tube paint, so you don't need a lot, and I'm finding that this one, it takes, it takes a lot to, th to, to stir it in, and I'm, I'm noticing that this pouring medium, I don't know if you can see, there's, there's still bubbles in there, and I mixed these up yesterday, so they've been sitting for almost 24 hours. If you can let them sit even longer, uh, the bubbles will escape uh, and disperse even more so. But this is the consistency of it with the tube paint. But I'm noticing with all of the colors I have mixed up, actually the tube paint more so, um, this medium pouring medium mix is a bit more bubbly. So the next paint I have is the Utrecht uh, Fluid Acrylic Red Violet. And this is the Dick Blick, uh, this is their their color their line and this one doesn't have as many bubbles in it i think it's i think it's also the paint and how well i had to stir it in and mix it up but this makes a really nice consistency even for fluid paint it's really nice and stretchy and it just comes off the stick really nicely but not as yeah i'm noticing not as many bubbles so i think it depends on the paint you're using how you have to mix it but this pouring medium is a little bit bubblier, I've noticed. So the longer you can let your paint sit, the better. And then the last one we're going to use today is this little piggy pigment in Lakeside. And I've had this one mixed up for a little bit already, so it doesn't have a lot of bubbles in there. But it just, it, I did not add any bare. This is what it looks like just with the pouring medium when I'm not going to add any bear to it for all of these tests. I think bear is compatible with it. Um, we'll, we'll test that another, at another time. Right now, let's just work with the pouring medium as is. So there's that one. And let's see. 
think I'm going to put the orange down first. sides too yeah you can see the little bubbles in there I don't know if the camera is capturing it I'm okay with it we're gonna go with it and then this is the red violet actually <laughs> I wanted to put this last oh well we're gonna go with it I wanted to put the blue underneath the violet but maybe it'll turn out nice Maybe it'll be another happy accident. <laughs> I've been having a lot of those lately. All right, so the, and with these two that we're doing today, I'm using the Australian Floetrol. The next video I will, you know, we'll do the same thing, but we'll be using the US Floetrol to see how it works. So for this one, I'm gonna use, this is the consistency. Uh, the Amsterdam Titanium White mixed with the Australian Floetrol at 4 to 1. Getting a little lightheaded there. <laughs> I've been doing so many swipes lately, I haven't done a lot of blooms. I think that that should work out nicely. Yes, no, maybe so. Let's modify this just a little bit. Blew out really nicely. I mean, you get all these really nice, even microscopic, minute cells. And I'll show you more in detail when we get over to the spinner box. I'm going to do too many. There's so many nice cells in here that I just want to keep. I might just do something right there. And something little maybe right here. I'm trying to pick up just a little bit of that red violet and overlapping it into the blue. Sometimes I can get it to work, other times not so much. All right, that looks good. And let's just do that too. And what I see here. I want to put just a little bit inside some of these bigger cells in the middle. If you just get a one color cell, sometimes adding a little interest as they get bigger, they won't be obnoxious. Just a little bit. All right, I think we're good. I will meet you over at the spinner box. All right, <clears throat> I just added just a little bit of pillow paint on the corners just to help it. But here is what it looks like. Here's a close up of the balloon before we spin it out. 
I'm gonna spin slowly because of the sides. I want it to just kind of trickle down. Whew. Wow, that is gorgeous. Still got paint moving. So we're just gonna slowly spin this out. love those tiny little cells in the center and I've noticed with this pouring medium those cute little cells in there they don't get distorted they stay so let's that's something that we're gonna watch to see how this dries and I'm not seeing just a tiny bit of movement let's just do one more little spin my sides look really good. I think we're there. All right. There we go. Oof, this one is gorgeous. I haven't done a bloom in a little while. Here's what that one looks like. All right, so now I am back. We're gonna do a, uh, a swipe with the same colors, but we're gonna use a black cell activator this time, and I'm gonna do it on the palette knife. And so here is what the black cell activator, this is the Amsterdam Oxide Black uh, mixed with the Australian Floetrol at 421. Sorry about that. Same pillow, Glidden Premium and Satin. I've already done my sides just to save time. I don't want this video being an hour long. I know some of my videos are longer when I'm introducing something new, and that's just because I have a lot to say about it. But I try to keep my videos to at least 20 minutes or less. I don't always succeed, but you can fast forward if you need to. I will not be offended. I think I'm going to use this knife and I'm just going to do one one big swipe and if I need to do a, another little one I will but I'm going to do where I put the cell activator first and then I'll put the colors and I'll show you once I have it on there. All right kind of like that. I've got the black cell activator first then I put down the red violet <clears throat> the lakeside pigment and then the red gold tube paint. So I think we're just going to start here. Swipe like that. Brought some of those out a little bit. Let's do that here as well. Just to give it something. It's probably going to get knocked off anyways, but kind of closes the gap there a little bit. I kind of like this stripe the way it is. Yeah, I'm going to put just a little bit of color right here. Bring that out. I have a little bit of cell activator, the lakeside, and then the red gold. I'm just going to go right It. Well, we'll just modify that. I think we've got enough paint on here. Should I move that over a little? And let's just do a little bit of modifying.
lot of this. I, I don't even want to do any little cute little curlies. It's all going to go off the side. So I'm really just concentrating on what's here. And even this here is going to kind of, it's all going to hit the side. there. I think we're good. I am going to meet you over at the spinner box and we are going to guide this along and see what it turns into. All right, here's what that one looks like before we start guiding it along. Really turned out nice with the swipes. Just gorgeous. I wish I would have had a little bit more orange in there, but I will take it. I want to spin it slowly just to get it to guide again down the side since it's a deep side. And we'll kind of guide it along a little. Kind of want to get some off at the top over here. And bring it back. it a little. Oh yeah. Still got more paint we need to come off. Alright, let's spin it again. Okay. Getting there. I don't want to lose too much of the color. I'm not going to have as much negative space as I thought, but I'm trying to keep that middle swirl because that has some of the white in there, the, the uh, black and white. Let's just go up here a little. Bring this back down. The, I love that lake side in there. Okay. Just one more little spin. I think I'll get enough paint off. I don't want to ruin the composition. I really like where I'm at right now. Let's just take it down a little just to get some... Still moving a little in the center, but I think I'm going to take my chances because I really like where this is at right now. This is this is super cool. And I've got enough on my sides. All right, last little baby spin. Yeah, that's good. Okay, cool. Oh, that is so cool. Alright, here's what that one looks like. I'm going to get cleaned up and I will show you the flyover of both of these pieces. Alright, here's this piece flyover. I love that lakeside in here, that little pop of shimmer, but this is why... <laughs> This right here is why I love the pouring medium mix with the, the, the Valspar and the Verithane together. It's just a complete explosion of cells and webbing and lightning and microscopic cells like right there. Just all of it. All right, here is the flyover of this one. I love that, that black and white bit right there. 
But I, I love that the, that more orange came out. At first, I didn't think that it would, but I love that orange peeking through the, the blue. Just gorgeous. I love that, that <coughs> excuse me, that ribbon right there where it has the shimmers. Uh, I'm curious to see how that will dry. So I will be back once these are both, both dry and we will go over the dried results. And I'm back to show you the two pieces that I just did with the Valspar Varathane pouring medium. And they dried beautifully. They dried just as I expected them to. And I'm, I really love, love this, uh, this pouring medium combination. I mean, the cells just completely explode. Let me just, let me back up a second just to give you the full piece of it, but it, it dries with a nice, nice gloss. It's not overly glossy. I know the, the bear by itself can be super glossy. Like you don't even need to varnish it glossy, but this has a nice gloss to it. And you can see the pigment really well in there. There wasn't a lot that came up, but just get closer so you can see the detail now. But even those cute tiny little cells didn't even move. And that's what I'm looking for. Um, I've had trouble with higher gloss paint bases. The bear I can't get to use alone. It does squirrely, squiggly things, and it's just way too thick. Uh, when it dries, it always cracks on me no matter what I do. So I can't use it alone, which is why I add it to other pouring mediums to kind of get the benefit. And so I wanted, I really wanted to try this Valspar Ultra, the high gloss, and I, I was kind of disheartened because it wasn't working. It was, it was being squirrely with the Josonia for me. But when I, when I combined it with the Varathane Triple Thick, it turned, I mean, it just turned into magic. Just these cells are just, well, here they are. <laughs> they just explode and they're gorgeous. So that was the bloom we did. And the swipe, I, I just, I told you how much I love these swipes. Here's, here's this as a whole, and you can see, and it, and, and, you know, in certain areas, because I, uh, utilize the, the pillow paint and the pillow cells, it is going to be a bit more matte and that's okay. I mean, if you're resining or varnishing, that's a non-issue. Um, but if you're not, that might be something to consider, but all up here is, has a nice gloss to it. And I'm going to bring you in just to show you the detail again, just the, the detail, the cells, they just pop up so nice. Got some nice coverage on all the sides with both of these two. That was a successful test with the Valspar Ultra High Gloss and the Varathane Triple Thick. I, I love that. And so, uh, First of all, let me know what you think of it. You know, in the comments below, uh, what what did you think of the pouring medium? How it responded? Have you used it? If do you like it? Do you use it with another varnish and it works well for you? I'd love to know all of this. So, next video, I'm going to again be testing out the uh, Valspar High Gloss, but with the US Floetrol cell activator. I'm going to mix up a fresh batch of both the black and the white cell activator, and we're going to see how this pouring medium responds with that. So I'm, I'm, I had so much fun with this and I'm super excited to try that and show you guys. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.